What's up guys, JV2017 here, and today I want to talk to you about my top 10 most anticipated games of this year. And actually I had 11 on this list, but I had to cut one, you know, just because 10 looks better than 11, I don't know why. Also, I want you guys to kind of pay attention to the quality of this video. The gameplay is completely unrelated, first off, want to note that. Second off, please pay attention to the quality, let me know if it looks really good, because I've got my new capture card, I haven't really used it a lot, only for streaming, but this is a straight up local recording, so I want to be able to achieve the best quality I possibly can for YouTube. So please let me know if this looks ridiculously good or not, because it really should. It should be 1080, 60 frames per second, even though it's not really on YouTube for everyone yet, but it should look really good. So anyways, enough with the rambling, on to the topic today. So. This isn't really in a top 10 order like I am the number number one is my most anticipated. I'm just going to kind of give you a list of these games that, you know, as they come out based on their release dates and kind of let you know. So first off, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls is coming out for consoles. And Diablo 3 was a massive, incredibly surprising success, at least in my eyes, for consoles. It completely translated from the PC gameplay that Diablo and Blizzard, you know, really are used to, and it translated great to the consoles, and I can't wait to hop back into that experience with a new character class, the Crusader, and with a new adventure mode, which is endless, apparently. So, uh, really can't wait to get my hands on that, because this summer drought of games has been awful. I know I speak for all of you when I say that, I mean, there's nothing to play unless you want to go back and play games that you've never played before, which is fine, but when there's no releases, it feels like there's really nothing going on. So, next up, this is kind of an iffy one. I know I'm still going to buy the game, but The Sims 4 comes out on September 2nd, and the reason it's iffy is, I don't know if you guys are big Sims fan, fans at all, but EA and Maxis are taking out a lot of features in Sims 4, and again, I'm going to buy it, but... The fact is, they're taking out a lot of essential things, and they've made up some bullshit reasons for doing so. Uh, first off, they're not having toddlers in the game, because apparently they're really they're way too complex and they can't be coded in at this point, which is, I think, bullshit. And second off, no pools. No, like, water pools that you can jump into. That's always been a thing in The Sims. You know, you would create your pool... Uh, construct it with a ladder, tell your sim to get in, and then delete the ladder, and they drown to death. You know, that's the fun of sims. They're not putting it in the game as of now. So, that's really shitty. I'm still going to get the game, but there's a whole other list of things. You can just Google it, and it's pretty bad. So, next up, of course, Destiny on September 9th. And I know I haven't been posting lately. It's not because of my health. It's for other reasons, but... Yes, I'm going to be posting a bunch of Destiny. I want to cover Destiny in a big way. So you guys need to tune in around that date, September 9th. I will be hitting Destiny hard, hitting the ground running, similar to what I had with GTA V, hopefully. That's my plan. And I'm going to be game planning for the next month because that's what it requires. So anyways, Destiny, I don't even need to talk about that game. It's going to be fantastic. Can't wait to play it. Civilization Beyond Earth comes out on... October 24th, so that's almost, that's a month and a half after Destiny, so I'll have plenty of time to play that, but Civilization, the new Civ, I fell in love with Civ Five over the summer uh, playing with my buddies, and uh, this new Civ looks promising, I really like the new concept, and I'm going to play the crap out of it for years, I, I just know it's going to be one of those games I come back to over and over, so there you go. Next up is Assassin's Creed Unity on October 28th, and I love the direction that they went with the new Assassin's Creed. They went away from these sprawling environments. I didn't really like, the, I don't really like an Assassin's Creed game that doesn't have a lot of verticality. That was the problem with Black Flag. I'm not saying Black Flag was a bad game, it's just my personal preference was to jump across the rooftops in Italy, you know, in Rome. That was awesome as Ezio. And we're getting this new kind of spin. And also it has co-op. Co-op is awesome. Co-op multiplayer in Assassin's Creed. And I get to be an assassin with my buddies. It's just, I can't wait for that game. I can't wait to return to the verticality. And an awesome point in, in, the, in history with 
the French Revolution. It's going to be very interesting. Can't wait to play that game. Next on my list is Sunset Overdrive, which also comes out on October 28th. So, Sunset Overdrive is an ambitious new exclusive from Insomniac Games. These people made Ratchet and Clank my favorite franchise of my childhood. So, I'm coming into that game with really, really high expectations. Uh, Sunset Overdrive, I'll definitely be picking that up for my Xbox One. Next up, I can't believe I'm saying it, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So, the multiplayer reveal was less than three or four days ago, and I was blown away. I am very impressed with what Sledgehammer has to offer. And the reason being, I'm, I'm more excited about this game than I thought I would be because of the new developer. And Sledgehammer has helped other studios in the past, but it's completely their project this time around. And I like that they didn't play it safe. They are going a little bit out of their comfort zone in terms of the Call of Duty franchise and giving us something in the future, something far-fetched, something we haven't seen before. I can't wait to get my hands on it. That'll be good, November 4th. Next up, the Halo Master Chief Collection. Oh my gosh, I'm also really excited for this. Um, I didn't really play a lot of the, I played the original Halo, I played Halo 2, I just don't remember them. I didn't play a lot of them. Played a lot of Halo 3, and anyways, point is, I can't wait to go back and reload those experiences on the next generation, Xbox One. And it will get uh, beta for Halo 5 with the purchase of the Master Chief Collection. I'm sure this that will sell incredibly well. I can't wait to play it. Pretty much saying that for everything here because, you know, it's my top 10. That's coming out on November 11th. Next up, probably the game I'm most excited about, if you can actually believe it, Dragon Age Inquisition. Every single, like, Gamescom, if you guys are, you know, up to date with E3 and all that stuff, Gamescom in Germany has been going on. They've been getting a lot of Dragon Age Inquisition gameplay. It looks so good. It looks, it's the best of both worlds of Origins and Dragon Age 2. Now, everyone thinks Dragon Age 2 was just shitty in comparison, but Dragon Age 2 got combat right, except for getting rid of the tactical view. Everything was more fast and fluid, and where Dragon Age Origins was very clunky and uh, just not very fun to play in terms of combat. However, everything else in Dragon Age Origins was, Origins was amazing, incredible. Uh, so I can't wait <laughs> to get my hands on that game. Next up, actually last on my list, is Far Cry 4 comes out November 18th. Also, Dragon Age Inquisition comes out November 18th also. So, Far Cry 4, uh, basically, Ubisoft keeps uh, appealing to the type of video game player that I am. I like violence. Sounds weird, but, you know, I'm a huge God of War fan. And Far Cry 3 was a very violent, very adult, mature game. Also, very incredibly well done open world shooter. There aren't a lot of open world first person shooters. Far Cry is the perfect setting for that, and they nail it. And this new uh, environment in the Himalayas, wherever the heck we are, Kar Karyat, I think is what it's called, Karyat, something like that, I don't know. And the new villain, all of that is very compelling. Can't wait to play it. Can't wait to play all these games. Also, you can tell I'm going to be broke. Everyone's going to be broke. That's 10 games, 60 bucks each. That's $600, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lot of games. So... Let me know what you guys are going to be playing 2014 this fall when the video game season basically kicks off. It's about to start here. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. Share with me again below what you guys are going to be playing uh, for 2014. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you all later. Peace.